Hi, I'm Brian Levy. I am the host of the Manchester Living podcast and I'm a partner at Manchester Living. The purpose of the podcast is to help people navigate the complex maze of elder care. We have a lexicon of elder care terms on our website at manchesterliving.com. Today, we're talking about wound care, not the most glamorous subject, but one that needs to be covered and it's often talked about in the elder care industry. First, we're going to go to new and noteworthy. I'm a lobster fan and I'm salivating watching this video. Please roll the tape. When most of the world is still asleep. It was this morning I woke up and I thought, well, ain't very late. I wonder it was there's only quarter past one. <laughs> Virginia Oliver's feet hit the floor. But I usually get up 20 minutes of five. All went along. Her sea legs may not be as sturdy as they once were but she's more at ease on a rocking boat than possibly anywhere else. I'm 101. Virginia, or Ginny as her friends call her, has been lobstering the waters off Rockland on and off for the last nine decades. They call me the lobster lady. <laughs> she doesn't do it alone. 15 years, Matt and I have been lobstering. See, my husband died 15 years ago. Her 78-year-old son, Max, Maxwell Eugene Oliver Jr. drives his late father's boat. You know, I'm getting old, too. My husband always said, well, she's a boy. And I said, might as well be me as you. <laughs> Her husband put the boss's name on the vessel. Well, that's what they wanted to name it, so I said, well, all right. <laughs> Max hauls the pots. You can only have 800 per bowl. And I have 200, so Max can only have 600. But he don't have that many. While Virginia bans the lobsters. Me, that one go. Or loads fresh pogies in bait bags. Oh yeah, she's healthy now. Oh, she's sharp that way. Yeah, nice. Oh, she's good all over. Mother and son working in quiet harmony. Take care of those sea legs. Happy birthday, Miss Virginia. All right, let's jump in to talk about wound care. I'm excited to have my guest today, Dr. Crystal Cronenberger with Itinerant Primary Care, who specializes in internal medicine. Thanks for being here. And Pamela Lathers, wound care specialist with Reskin. I guess in the, in the interest of full disclosure, we all work together in our care homes and our private duty side as well. So for the, the small print from the lawyers, we got to say that, right? Let's jump in. Uh, Dr. Cronenberger. Which patients are at highest risk for developing pressure wounds? So typically patients, um, there's actually a scale they use. So the, the patients who are most at risk are those that have mobility issues. Uh, they are not very active. They're either bed bound or chair bound. Uh, anybody who's incontinent, uh, that creates a moisture environment that sets up uh, a wound, potential wound problem. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, people who are malnourished. And um, so those are, you know, those are like uh, anybody who's had sensory problems, um, you know, like a stroke or diabetes and they can't feel very well, then that also sets up um, a situation for a, a potential wound. Okay. Um, yeah. Pamela, what are the different kind of wounds? What are the different types? Oh gosh, pressure pressure wounds are probably the ones we see the most, mm -hmm. um, followed by diabetic wounds and venous stasis wounds. Those are the three most common that we see, and obviously diabetic wounds come from people who have diabetes, usually uncontrolled, um, or brittle diabetics, and then the venous stasis, they have trouble getting blood flow to their legs, and they end up with ulcers on their legs. And so what, what are the wound, um, how are wounds staged or classified? They're classified one through unstageable. Um, the one is the redness, the two, then there's a little bit of an opening. It goes on and on. And the unstageable is typically where you can actually see to the bone or to the tendon or to something else yucky like that. You know, I have a weak stomach. That's why I just said yucky. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Dr. Cronenberger, <laughs> what are the most common sites for pressure wounds? So typically you're going to have your sacrum or your tailbone area. Um, the heels when somebody's lying in bed, so heels are a very common sight. Uh, the sides of the hips, um, so I don't want to get too medical, but I can use medical terms, but the, the hips or the trochanters, 
Um, and even the ears, people who lay, like if they're on one side mm -hmm. and they're laying mm -hmm. on their ear. And so is it where the body is touching the bed? Mm -hmm. It's creating that... a pressure, pressure points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What are the, pur what's the purpose of dressings? So dressings, uh, so basically if a wound is bleeding, then um, we call that like hemostasis where we want to control the bleeding with a dressing. Kind of like when you cut your finger, you want to put a Band-Aid on it, right? To right. stop the bleeding. Then there's also something called debridement, which if a wound needs um, kind of like a, it may be a little bit infected, then there are certain dressings you can apply to draw that out. Um, and there's all kinds of dressings that we can't get into right now. <laughs> um, and so those, those are the, the main purpose and to prevent contamination. Um, like any kind of bacteria that might get into the wound, you want to try to cover it. So those are the main um, reasons for addressing. And then okay. you have some of the patients who, to expound on that, mm -hmm. some of the patients who will pick at wounds. Mm -hmm. right. And those nasty fingers picking at wounds create more trouble. What role does nutrition play in the wound care? Oh, golly. <laughs> it's, that is the trouble. <laughs> That is a lot of the trouble with our wounds. Um, our patients don't have good nutrition. They're either not getting enough food, they're getting the wrong kind of food, they're not willing to eat, they're not willing to drink, and hydration and nutrition give you the protein that you need to heal, and they give you the supplemental stuff, if you will, in your body to keep it healthy and not create wounds. So without good nutrition, it's just a breeding ground for trouble. So inevitably, someone on hospice who is bedbound mm -hmm. and not uh, receiving enough nutrition as mm -hmm. they normally would, their body breaks down faster. Correct. Causing more wounds. They do. And we know that's going to happen, but we also know that there are ways to help mitigate some of that and to help at least make them feel more comfortable sure. as they're going through that process. Sure. And I should, I should uh, specify end-of-life hospice, end not of life. just hospice. Right. Thank Correct. Um, how can pressure wounds be prevented? So prevention, basically, there's several things. Uh, frequent turning for those bed-bound patients who can't turn themselves every, usually every two hours is what the recommendation is, change, change in position. Uh, nutrition, of course, we already mentioned, is keeping up their protein status. And um, heel protectors for the, the heel wounds for our bed-bound patients. So I they have, see a lot of those in our care homes. Yeah, Explain we, that. That is a very common um, place for wounds, as I mentioned before, where, you know, they are not moving their feet or like, for instance, I have a patient right now who has had a stroke on, and so his left side is paralyzed and he can't move his, uh, his left leg. There's no circulation. Right. And so there is... Uh, his leg just stays in one position. So he did develop a wound on his, on the outside of his ankle. Mm -hmm. And um, so he had to have like protectors in that area. Yeah, so. And then you've got some of the patients who they, they wiggle, mm -hmm. if you will, and they, they move their feet constantly and those heels just grind against like the sheets. Sheer force. And it's a sheer, mm -hmm. uh, a shearing yeah. action almost against those heels. So yeah. would one of the treatments be to put socks on? Socks help, but the, the, the cushions, boots yeah, the cushions. are considerably Well, and better. what I was going to say, too, is adding to that is um, a surface that is like egg crate surface mm -hmm. or a low flow air mattress, things like that, especially for bed bound mm -hmm. patients. So once, once redness is noticed on a patient, what's the best treatment path to avoid progressive wound? So if I notice a what we call a stage one, uh -huh. which is when it's red, um, then we immediately get on top of it because otherwise it's going to quickly go mm -hmm. to a stage two. So I, we use we start with barrier cream, um, and we make sure that the site is being offloaded. Uh, so we make sure if they're in a facility where the staff need to be educated on how to turn, how frequently to turn. Uh, a lot of these facilities are understaffed, mm -hmm. and yeah. so they have to be reminded mm -hmm. that these patients can't move mm -hmm. and they need to be turned more frequently. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes a light dressing, um, like a bandage, just a little extra padding sometimes can help too. Elaborate on the turning, how important it is and the duration mm -hmm. in between turns. You know, some people, some families don't want us to wake our residents to turn them or change Correct. them throughout the night. Could you elaborate? Well, on just that? imagine if you were lying in one position for several hours. I mean, we would develop mm -hmm. a pressure wound, mm -hmm. even just 
normal people who are healthy. I can't sit still for five minutes, right. so I'm not getting the pressure. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's very important. And so most uh, facilities, hospitals, they have in place protocol mm -hmm. to turn every two hours. It's been shown that that is a kind of like the magic number mm -hmm. to maybe prevent wounds, uh, pressure wounds from developing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very important to reposition and turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wounds can start as quickly as 45 minutes, mm -hmm. especially if the, the patient is thin, undernourished, bony, mm -hmm. et cetera. You can imagine just that pressure of that wound or that hip, for instance, or the, the tailbone against that bed for hours on end, how that could create that kind of stress on the skin and the, yeah. the body. And, then, yeah. Go ahead. and usually wounds are, like speaking of the bones, that's typically where you see mm -hmm. wounds is when you have a bony prominence, mm -hmm. um, especially in our very thin patients. Right, and then once you identify the redness, what's the course of action? Where do you go from there? You identify the, the side is red. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was cream. what I was saying, the barrier mm -hmm. cream, mm -hmm. uh, maybe placing a bandage over mm -hmm. it, making sure that the staff or whoever's in charge of the, the patient, turning them every mm -hmm. at least every two hours. And also uh, because that's offloading pressure and then making sure that they're not on any line on any hard surfaces um, like make sure like a soft mattress mm -hmm. or an air mattress or uh, like what they call an egg crate mm -hmm. kind of sure and then treatment wise talk about some of the um, the, the things that you use meta honey or antibacterial ointment oh gosh there's so many different products at this point um, the meta honey is is truly a, a wonderful product when the wound begins to get worse um, and if there are ways to obviously test for infection. If there is infection, we need to be treating it. So we're gonna test for infection, make sure we're giving the right antibiotic if it is infected. From that point on, there can be grafting done. There can be um, ultra misting done, which helps keep the wound moist, but not overly moist. You can do some debreeding with that, keep it clean, keep it dry, um, and then do the actual, the amniotic grafting is what we choose to do, and it, it's a beautiful, process where you get all those wonderful cells in there to proliferate and rebuild all of that tissue. So that's one of the things that science. we do. It's amazing. Science is it's a great place to be right now. <laughs> I know we touched on it a little bit, but I want to get back to health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit more in, in, in ways that families at home that mm -hmm. are that are that have family members aging in place and facilities. Mm -hmm. Will you cover that a little bit more? Oh, what should gosh. they be eating? What should they be drinking? Nutrition is paramount to healing and, and mitigation. Um, anything with extra protein, the boosts, the insurers, the protein drinks that just come in packets that you can put in water if they'll drink water, um, if they will eat at all to get some good protein in them that way, some good vegetables and fruits and things of that nature. If they won't eat, that's where we really find more trouble than anything is when pe people just refuse. They just don't want to eat. And how do you feel about supplements like Boost? Oh, they're super. If, if whatever we can get do, do to get food in them, we are happy, happy, happy. Mm -hmm. Anything we can get in them that's protein-based to help with that healing process. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, a lot of these patients are not eating meals per se mm -hmm. or are unable to swallow um, mm -hmm. very well. So yes, I uh, we order Boost and Ensure whatever their favorite protein drink is. I tell the family get what they will, get what they will drink because mm -hmm. a lot of them don't like some of the flavors or the different mm -hmm. brands. So I just say just experiment and mm -hmm. and see see what something is better than that. I even like mm -hmm. the um, the yogurt mm -hmm. smoothies that have a lot of, there's some really high protein yogurt mm -hmm. drinks out there if mm -hmm. they like yogurt. If they'll so. do that. Mm -hmm. Ice cream and Boost, make a little shake out of it mm -hmm. and see if they'll even do that. Right. Most people eat or drink something sweet. So if someone is experiencing a, a wound issue and they're at home, there are places that they can call. I know this isn't an advertisement for your companies mm -hmm. and your services, mm -hmm. but what do they do? Who do they call? What, what, what services are available for them where they don't have to pick up and go to a doctor mm -hmm. or go to a mm -hmm. hospital. I think obviously the um, house call physician is obviously the best way to go because the physician that comes to you. Right. And then we do the That's same covered thing. by Medicare. It's covered by Medicare. Exactly. And the other 
Advantage plans as well. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, when we can actually go to the home and treat wounds in the home, that is, it's a gift. It's truly a gift right. because it, think about it. If you are in a wheelchair, if you are bed bound, if your family works still, you're going to have a hard time getting to a wound clinic. Sure. So we come to them, and that's one of the best things we can do for people is be able to come to them to treat them. Mm -hmm. Doctor Cronenberger, what haven't I asked you that I should? Personal or professional? <laughs> <laughs> professional first. <laughs> I can't reiterate enough how important it is for people who are not mobile that they have to they have to offload pressure sites, they have to be repositioned, um, and you know every two hours. So right, but even if that, you can't turn them prop them mm -hmm. so that they different are position. in a different position. Sure. Do something to offload that pressure. And hygiene, keep them clean, especially in the nether regions. Mm -hmm. Keep them clean and dry. Do not let people sit in their um, wet brief. Don't let them sit in a brief that's soiled. Keep them yes. clean and dry. And what haven't I asked you that I should? I can't think of a thing. Covered all the bases. You covered all the bases. God, I'm good. You're good. All right. Let's move on to the nugget portion of this broadcast episode, show, podcast. Um, this is a visual that I saw online uh, recently, and it just really, it, it struck me. And um, it's, a, it's an older gentleman in bed, and it says, I watched a lot of TV, ate a lot of fast food, sold more laminate countertops in June of 1973 than anyone else in the, in the southeast region. My work here is done. <laughs> I think the moral of the story on this one is don't let your career define you. Work hard and play hard. All right, let's move on to the lightning round. Love it. This is an opportunity for uh, listeners to get to know you guys in a non-clinical, personal way. Oh so boy. here's the personal questions. Uh, we'll start with Dr. Cronenberger and then go to you, Pamela. Perfect. Where were you born and raised? Dallas, Texas. Pamela? Wow. North Bend, Oregon, raised mostly in Texas. Welcome. Thanks. College and degree. Uh, Baylor College of Medicine for medical school, Colorado for master's in public health. Pamela? Texas Tech. All right. Uh, Dr. Krenneberger, can you write in cursive? Yes, I can. I'm old <laughs> enough. <laughs> and a doctor writing in cursive nonetheless. Pamela? Absolutely. Ever lived abroad? No. Pamela? Yes. Ever been arrested? Thankfully, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I've had a yes. That's a different episode. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Ever slept in a tent? Of course. Camper? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Junk food or health nut? Uh, I'm neither. I'm like moderation both ways. <laughs> okay. Pamela? Health nut. Wow. Mountains or beach? Mountains. Pamela? Both. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Either. I've wow. had both. Oh, Believe it or not. Karaoke, yes or no? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Pamela? <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> No. Nobody wants to hear mine, no. Dr. Cronenberger, you meet your 18-year-old self. You're allowed three words. What would you say? Oh, wow. I would say imperfection is okay. Ooh. That is fabulous. That's deep. Pamela? Wow. Don't be afraid. Beautiful. All right, last one. Proudest career accomplishment? Is Whenever a patient um, tells me, hey, I really, really appreciate what I've done for them, that's... Yeah. That's the gratification. That's the gratification. Pamela? I'd have to say, agree with that when my patients actually say, thank you. You know you've added to their the value to their life and you can't, there's nothing better. Oh, Y'all do wonderful work and we thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your knowledge. I always ask for, uh, I guess I always want guests on the show that are thought leaders and industry experts in their field and I couldn't have asked for a better panel today. So thank, thank you. you for being here. Thank if the viewers that. are interested in reaching out to you for additional questions, what's the best way for them to reach you, Dr. Kornberger? Uh My email is drk, D-R-K, at itinerantprimarycare.com. Dot com. And we will put that up on the screen so you don't have to spell it all. Pamela? Fabulous. Uh, Reskin Medical, P. Lathers at reskinmed.com. R-E-S-K-I-N-M-E-D.com. Fantastic. All right. You can find this episode and past episodes of the Manchester Living Podcast by searching Manchester Living Podcast on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. If there's anything I can ever do for you, please reach out directly. Thank you.